Hello friends, welcome to Technique. This is Normal here and you're watching the detailed camera review of the new smartphone from Oppo in India, the Oppo F17 Pro. The new Oppo F17 Pro comes with a quad camera setup with 48 megapixel primary camera and a dual selfie camera. So let's dive deep into the camera to see how it performs for the price segment. So if this is your first time on this channel, do hit that red subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to get notified of all the videos we publish. Now coming back to the review, let's first have a look at the hardware offered. In terms of the camera hardware, the Oppo F17 Pro packs a quad rear camera with 48 megapixel primary camera with f1.8 aperture. You also get an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens and two mono sensors, each 2 megapixel for depth sensing. There is also LED flash included. The front camera is a 16 megapixel one with f2.4 aperture and there is also a 2 megapixel depth sensor. So let's find out how the camera performs. First, let's have a look at the video quality. The phone can shoot 4K videos in 30 FPS. The details looks good with good colors on offer. There is also details and sharpness levels being offered. But it misses out on stabilization and hence not good for moving videos. There is also no 4K at 60 FPS option available. The phone can also do 1080p resolution at 30 FPS and the 30 FPS video seems to have good clarity as well. The stabilization is good and does a decent job overall. The colors are also quite okay and did not see any major saturation issues. The lack of 1080p at 60 FPS is another feature which is missing. Overall, the video quality is good but there is still room for improvement with details and sharpness levels. The phone can also record videos in ultra wide angle lens and 1080p resolution is offered without stabilization. The quality is again good for an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. The phone can also record slow motion videos in 1080p resolution and it looks quite good in terms of the overall clarity. Now moving on to the photos. The daylight shots taken with the 48 megapixel camera came out quite well. The images are bright and colors are vivid but unlike the Reno 4 Pro, it does not saturate the photos. The sharpness levels and details are also good on the photos which is evident when you zoom in. But occasionally it does get the white balance wrong especially with a lot of sunlight around. Overall we feel Oppo has done a good job here and daylight shots are quite good. The 8 megapixel ultra wide angle shots came out pretty good. This is definitely a surprise especially for the fact that 8 megapixel maintained the same color accuracy as the primary sensor even though the sharpness level was less which is quite obvious. The ultra wide angle shots are really usable ones. The close up shots taken with the camera was good and it has good details and sharpness levels too. Once again the colors are good and does not saturate but the phone misses out on the macro sensor as it provides dual depth sensors. Now moving on to the portrait shots, we felt that the portraits were slightly disappointing as the skin tones were not really accurate and it has the tendency to whiten the skins. The sharpness levels are good and so is the edge detection with dual cameras. Oppo can do a bit more fine tuning in terms of the portraits. Next moving on to the low light captures, with f1.8 aperture the phone can take some good images in low light but with artificial indoor lights. The colors are good, there is good amount of details and sharpness levels are also quite ok. But when light drops further, in extreme low light conditions you can clearly see higher noise levels but again the details are pretty good. There is also night mode on offer, turning on makes the images more details and gets better. So in extreme low light, it is always better to go with the night mode but you, may, you should make sure that you keep the phone stable while taking extreme low light captures. Now moving on to the selfie camera. The 16 megapixel shooter can shoot some decent selfies but we felt the sharpness levels are in great. The skin tones are acceptable but here again we feel there is room for improvement. The dynamic range is quite okay. We turned off the beauty mode since we like selfies without the beauty. Also, selfies are more of a personal choice so you can judge based on the clarity. 
The phone does come with a portrait mode with a dual camera setup and here again the edge detection is pretty good. So this is the front facing camera sample taken with the Oppo F17 Pro. This can record videos in 1080p resolution. So you can judge yourself how good the clarity of the video is and also the audio output from the front camera on the Oppo F17 Pro. So this is the super stable mode for the front facing camera on the Oppo F17 Pro. So you can judge yourself how good uh, the quality of the video is or the stabilization and uh, also the audio output from the front camera. So summing up, how good is the Oppo F17 Pro performance in terms of the camera? With the Oppo F17 Pro, Oppo delivers a good camera experience with daylight shots, close-up shots, good ultra-wide angle shots and definitely a good low-light experience. While there are a few areas which needs improvements like the portraits and selfies, overall we feel most people will definitely like the experience of the Oppo F17 Pro with 6 AI cameras. So what do you guys think about the camera on the Oppo S17 Pro? Do share in your thoughts in the comment section. This is Normal signing off with a camera review of the Oppo S17 Pro. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in our next video. Have a great day.